A Different Perspective is quickly becoming one of my more favorite Manosphere ones. And I'm going to keep it real. It's mainly because he does back it up with information and doesn't ride the wave. Now, in the Black Manosphere, we do need more centralists or people who stick by information because the accountability, because it's just mudslinging at the end of the day if you can't back up what you're saying, what you're doing. But here, this thing is beautiful. This is beautiful. He's not the only one. Uh, one of the other ones I follow, I follow a few, but they all eventually start getting political. And that's when I kind of back away. MTR, uh, Medicore, uh, Medicor, uh, tutorials and reviews, he's managed to do that. He's managed to survive the wave and he's strong for that, but it's very hard to be Manosphere and not do that because that's essentially what it's set up to do. The Manosphere is right-wing conservative. You know, let's call it for what it is. It is right-wing conservative Republican. And people who don't want to admit that or shy away from that, I question your motives. You know, let's be honest. A lot of them are even getting money and support from it. And some of the people, who, same dudes who are putting out this stuff about uh, this and the other, they're also kind of about manosphere stuff. They're also putting out stuff about just racist stuff and grifting and this anti-Black community stuff. And again, anything that attacks a community based off of propaganda, I'm gonna say it's anti-community. So, yeah, but this is funny. Like, let me go to the community tab. How do I do that? How do I do that? Yeah, this is my other channel, but everything is on here. Wait, did I not subscribe to him? Let me subscribe to him. Relationship coach tells no, women the bitter truth. Yeah. Now don't get me wrong, some of these videos are kind of old. Um, not this one in particular, 18 hours. But some of these videos are kind of old. The thing about it is at the end of the day, is that I mean like some of these uh training coaches and how they're reacting. Because when it comes down to black pill results just results, just factual results. A lot of these black women coaches are getting tired of these relationships not working because then their job is on it. This is why Kevin Samuels was a beast. He was a monster. He focused on results. Well, what did, when Asta, <laughs> when Asta from Black Clover asked Julius, what makes you uh, Wizard King? The Wizard King looked down and said, results results and i love that it was bone chilling because of how how cut bone true it was what produces result is always going to be seen as truth and be perceived as truth so these dating coaches who are not able to produce these results you know either they're going to be accountable or they're going to be honest about what's going on oh also something i want to go ahead and say about coffee pot i did not copy him I actually made, wanted to make this channel 2017, and it was based upon the mythical Lunar Dew, but uh, look, it, it didn't get off. But I do like his sound bites and stuff, I really do. Uh, but his video's 12 minutes. I'm trying to get to the... <laughs> I'm trying to get to the community tab. Society, guys who have depression, girls who have depression. Oh, yeah, this is another person. I'm not subscribed to him either. What? I should be. What's going on? Am, am I being unsubscribed from people? That's kind of weird. Oh, about this. I did a video on this, and everyone to a family member are saying that this was a skit and not to take it seriously. My problem with accepting, not, not not their point of view, but accepting it as a skit in general, is that, mm, here's the thing about that. She did a follow-up video. She did a follow-up video. That, if, if, look, you're endangering children at this point. 
and I pointed that out to a family member. She got mad, but I was like, look, you're endangering children at that point. You're denying them food because of how you feel. And you're showing a judgment issue here. But yeah, that's how it is. And it does this because, look, a lot of Western society, just talking about this, a lot of Western society functions off of bar rules. And one of the things that uh, I've learned to do as a man who had mental health uh, issues in the past, how can I put this? I have them better under control. Ooh, when I talk about my mental health, I'm talking about depression, scars, trauma, things of that nature. I'm not talking about anything I'm born with. If anything, I have ADD. It's not that bad. But when it comes to a lot of mental health stuff, it was trauma, scars, different things of that nature. And I had to do a, left, a lot of self-mending and medicating. And if you're a guy and you meet the level of hypergamy, they treat you right. If you don't, then you got to do a lot of self-building, self you got to do a lot of self-work. Because it's designed really for women to thrive. Because can I be real? Can I be honest? They don't really care about women and their mental health issues because they don't hold them accountable for their mental health issues. Instead, they kind of over glorify it and make it seem like it's such a good thing or it's something that other people, okay, then let's talk about mental health in general. No, they don't. Because in these uh, single parent households, for example, a woman or a mother can pass on mental problems to their kid and trauma. You know, trauma bonding is something that a lot of parents do. And they'll, do, they'll trauma bond their kids and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they don't care about the women. They just care about keeping the money flowing. This is bar rules. And I've said this before. Maybe I need to say another, because bar rules, it flows too smooth and it doesn't sound catchy. That's weird. Normally things that flow smooth are catchy. Maybe it's the way I'm saying it. Bar rules, bar examples. Look, they know if they keep the women coming, they keep the men coming. So if they keep the women well not even well, if they keep them, eh, whatever this is, whatever this is where they can't address certain issues and make the women accountable because they're not looking for accountability. They're looking to keep the women coming. They're looking to keep the women coming, whether they're damaged or not, whether they have issues or not. And the more issues they have, the better because that means they can't pair a bond. They can't bond to the man that they're supposed to. So the more damages they have, the more they'll try different men. And the more they'll try different men, the more, yeah, it, it, it's better for them. I mean, how many, we're just now starting to talk about how dangerous it is to get lucky as a man for real and how this can go bad. Before we were like, yo, if you get lucky and you're a dude, you're top dog. No, that's not 100% correct either. Julia Marie, the girl says all guys have the opportunity of sex and I hate it. Tell them, yeah. Well, yeah, also you have to, and I'm gonna say this as many times as possible, you have to consider the bottom line here. The bottom line is that a lot of women don't wanna be honest about this, but they bottom out the bottom line of dating. A lot of unattractive, ugly women get to make it to the point of having sex and having kids, not men. If a man does it, he has a steady job, and it, maybe it's one of his kids, but normally uh, the woman kind of set him up with a kid that wasn't his. And, you know, we're seeing that now today in the manosphere where there are videos being put out about men testing kids and finding out that they're not theirs. You know, you don't know when it's a baby, and you find out later. And what's starting to happen are things are changing because even when you meet the level of hypergamy and you're the guy that a lot of women want, the women are starting to learn or have learned, especially in the black community's case, that that power resides with them. They're calling rank by using hypergamy. And so what some smarter men have done in other communities ha has dated out. And that's something that I was looking at whenever, especially whenever black women try to bring up 
uh, like uh, they, they try to be like, well, black men have dated out. And well, so have white men. <laughs> white men date out? Are you kidding me? It's fixed a lot of their issues. In fact, the white women realize, oh God, I have to compete. You notice that white women don't complain about white men dating out? They don't. They really don't. They they kind of do, but then they they realize we got to shut the hell up and compete. That's why I laugh whenever uh, someone black try to throw it in like black people's face because I'm like, yo, white people will be getting black, Hispanic, they get whatever. They mm, they get whatever. And the, and the women shut the hell up oftentimes. And, I, and I've come to notice that. And it's what I'm seeing with the black women is a lack of respect. Because whenever they're dating out or uh, their relationship is the byproduct of white men dating out, they shut the hell up. Or they put it on blast and try to say, I got for better. But I pay attention to do they treat this man right? Because I've seen those relationships go poor, just the same, because they're relationships. You got to do a relationship by a relationship and it's work. But yeah, this one was just actually just talking about sex and addressing it. And yeah, but I'm seeing more white women who are coming to their senses here and being like, okay, yeah, maybe we shouldn't or we should address men doing what they're supposed to. Maybe it's grifting. Maybe it's them being honest. This hit, this hit way too hard. This hit way too hard for me. I actually did see it, but now I'm addressing way too hard. I've had this happen. Now, if you notice the guy is uh, drawn less well, less defined, and that's for a reason. He's a normie and she's a girl who's above or around or above average. And what they have the tendency to do is because they believe they're attractive or because, or because they've just had enough sex. Look, it's not based on for whether you're attractive or not. For women, if you've had enough sex, you believe you're attractive enough. In fact, one of the things I paid attention to was how, when I was growing up, how some women's confidence would shift based on how much sex they had. And that's one of the telltale sign that a, a woman had lost her virginity. I mean, they play with the mental depression stuff now, but you hit the right areas conversation-wise, it can tell where they have that confidence verifying that they've had a lot of sex. It's pretty easy. But, yeah, as a normie guy, whatever, I have had my fair share, my fair share of women who are either believed they're attractive or subpar attractive or they've just been shared out by the entire community to come at me with an attitude because they've had sex or they want to check and believe they're super sexy. And it's annoying because they're not asking me out or something. It's like they're trying to say, because you're not super attractive and I know that I'm attractive or I believe I'm attractive, I'm going to say that you're trying to do something to me. What? That's happened. That's happened to way too many dudes. That happened to me. There was this one girl that, again, wasn't that attractive. She was just having a lot of sex who tried to hit at my self-esteem. And I didn't pick it up because I didn't care at the time. But she was calling me out, saying short, this, that, and the other. Uh, she was also doing it to another guy in the group. This was way back after I just graduated community college. Well, no, co- no, just high school. Graduated high school, and there was this chick who was running around shaming dudes for uh, uh, whatever. Now, the one guy she had already slept with was way out of her league, but she would, in conversation, bring up and shame plenty of dudes. And I was sitting up there like, why is she just so mean? You know, she's just mean. But, uh, you know, I didn't take it because I'm like, okay, if she's nasty in conversation, she's probably nasty on the inside. You know, I wasn't thinking about sex then. I wasn't thinking about sex. I lost my virginity at 24. <laughs> Disney had no right making Nala this bad. <laughs> he said, that's a lie. <laughs> I'm not that bad. This is also the comedy that I subscribe to. <laughs> <laughs> he about to do something strange to a lion. He about to he about to chance it all. <laughs>
a match of the band in Africa and a wild champion for a, a female lion who are the most vicious in comparison to the males. Yep. 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 You see, this is why I'm actually blessed and thankful for the manosphere. Political affiliations and stuff aside, it has blessed men with knowledge and brought them up to date. Men can sit there and absorb knowledge and experience from different men's experience, and they can understand and vet the information for themselves. Now, what's very important is that they do vet the information for themselves, consider how they're different and stack it up information. Your outcome is not gonna be the same as other men. That is very important to consider. However, what's the average or the medium between the mean, medium, and mode? That's old school. But what's the average? Is that uh, most women just don't respect most men. And if you're an average man, she's not gonna respect you. She's not. What you're making a future for is divorce or you're making a future for uh, a bad relationship or a bad fallout. Because look, if a woman doesn't respect you, it will always end bad. And what we've learned, because everything works the way of women, what we've learned, respect is now. Respect is lust. So if a woman doesn't lust for you, she doesn't respect you. And if she doesn't respect you, there's no point. Because there's nothing to really make them accountable on that whole respect line. I mean, when a woman says that she respects a man, what do, what do you think, what do you truly believe that means? Especially today and what's going on. They're allowed to size shame a man. They're allowed to weight shame a man. Cool, great. Um, but with all that added power, what are they accountable for? What can they answer to? Their lust. That's the only thing you can trust them by. And if they don't lust for you, there's nothing to trust. You you trust their lust. You and that's what a relationship I build off of. Because when they're lustful and they know they're in the wrong, they're gonna have the chance to make up excuses for it. And because look, spoilers from the black community, that's what black women do. They use lust and availability of sex and controlling that to try to say that. So in the other communities, it's no different. It, it really isn't. My, again, I'll say it as many times as possible. My dad is six foot four and had multiple baby mamas and multiple women. And they either blame themselves or blame him in the peripheral. They, they blame him from hindsight. You know, when they were getting it in, when they were having sex, when they were doing all that stuff, they, they, they didn't say, they couldn't say shit. It's different on the man's side because a lot of these women are controlling who has access to sex. And they're using sex to judge proficiency of a man. And you kind of see it today where, not as much today, but maybe five years ago, you saw more where if a man was really having sex, women would be interested and be like, yo, I got to figure out what's a, what, the, what does this guy have going on? Not anymore. You know, it's not like that. His top comment here, stop blaming us, we don't care, um, radiates. Male privilege is wearing the same outfit multiple times to multiple events while girls can't wear the same dress twice no matter how cute it is. This is normally women judging other women. Um, also, here's the thing about that whole male privilege thing. If a dude is doing this and a woman has not called him out on it, um, She's probably fucking. So this is that hypergamy stuff that I was talking about. There isn't a single straight man on earth who cares if you wear the same cute dress twice. The negative comments will come from other women. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Maybe I did see that one before. PSA men don't get to decide what sex is. So a particular group of people cannot have an opinion about some due, due to their gender. I was positive there's a term for this. <laughs> yeah. Look, at this point, what's going to happen is that as this 
I don't want to use this word, but let me go ahead and use it. Gentrification continues. It's building up lasting proof of everything that has gone wrong. And even in the video that I reacted to, where a homosexual man was blaming all of the black men of the black community for the black men that he and other black women had sex with and relationships did not work out. Um, it's going to build proof on who's actually accountable. Because when you get down to the fine science, when you get down to the science of it, when we count all the numbers, what's showing is that women are making these bad choices. And when they make these bad choices and endanger the community, the men are still blamed and accountable. Okay, put the people who are accountable in charge. Or admit that you don't like them. Just do that. Oh, picture's worth a thousand words. Picture's worth a thousand words. I did a video on Roe v. Wade, and my perspective about Roe v. Wade was it was about money. Look, in some of the red states, they click more. And um, something that's going on is in a lot of the red states, they're realizing that men are pulling out of a lot of these social events and stuff. It's not just COVID anymore. Plenty of men are starting to realize that, yo, if I'm not on that level of hypergamy, if I'm not registered in a woman's mind that's super attractive, everything I'm going to do, I'm going to waste time and money. And as times get harder or things get closer to a recession, we're going to see that happen more. Because, it, it, look, mm, well, a depression, but a depression is way, way worse. It's an economics class, so the, the things are going around in my head. But the economy naturally goes up and down. Depending on your support system and what you have established, yeah, there are a few shock values like wars and things of nature that can affect uh, things like oil and gas. Again, when, when uh, Bush was in office and we went to war, gas was up $4, and that was way back when. So coming to now, coming and talking about this money and stuff like that, uh, look... With all that's going on, with all that's happening, at the end of the day, look, men are going to make choices and they're not going to waste time on women. They're not going to. We're getting past that point. All men do sit up is do when women aren't having sex with them, they sit up and blame themselves for coming there and dealing with women in the first place. Like, it's coming to a point where plenty of dudes are actually starting to not come. And you know, those are, the, those are the people who actually spend the money. A woman will show up and expect men to spend money on her whenever she goes to an event. They don't bring the money themselves. They encourage people to spend money. But as they lose that power, they're going to lose their voice. And I really believe with the Roe v. Wade thing happening, a lot of red states are doing a, a fiscal money experiment to see whether or not uh, they're going to survive better. And if it works out, it's going to be more towards the conservatives. They're going to be like, yo, our ways work. So yeah, as centralist, money-wise, I, I do agree on that. Because as a thinking human being, I'm not, I'm not sure what you register as to other people, as a thinking human being, just existing, I'm not going to spend my money on a woman who doesn't like me, is not attracted to me, and I'm not going to chance it. Those days are over. Why well, spend money on those betting days are over. Those betting days for most men are over. A lot of men are starting to figure it out. You know, if you're not the Saturday or the other, then there's no point. And one of the things that goes heavy is actually how they're censoring content that points out uh, the double standard for men. Because there are plenty of men who don't date, do, don't do this, any other, and they're still getting blamed for the community. So, yeah, they're dependent communities. Okay, last one, because I've been going on for a while, but this is still hilarious. This is still hilarious. And that's not always the case. It's only the case if they don't have multiple men to pay for it. If a woman has feminist ways and she don't sweat the bill, uh, she has dudes on the back of 
Because even a woman who makes six figures and she makes that six figures honestly, for example, she's going to sweat the smaller dollars because she understands how hard it is to make that money. We're not talking about sex and money, sexism and money. We're talking about money in general. If you work hard for the money you make, you're going to sweat every dollar you lose. So, yeah, if they're not sweating it, lots of times they have other people to pay for it. So, you know, if you identify a woman as a feminist and she doesn't sweat it when the bill comes and stuff, you are not her main source. And, uh, and she has other people. I just want to go ahead and add that to it. This has been all with Luna Do, a different group. I'm pretty sure I went on longer than I was supposed to. <laughs> yep. Yep. That was, that's a perfect thing to end it on. Yeah. 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 This definitely like this. Did I not like the other ones? Oh, you heard it here first, guys. Mm. Go to commercial.